Hello and welcome back. It's time for our press review for this morning. What the Egyptian press is saying today, and uh, we are uh, we are honored to have with us this morning, uh, Mr. Mohsin Badawi, journalist and chairman of the Abdurrahman Badawi Cultural Center. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right. Uh, all most papers of all papers in Egypt now are covering uh, on the front pages the. Uh, ongoing pr protests at Tahrir Square. It's not anymore the Friday protest as it has been in the last few months. Now the demonstrators are saying that they are staying in Tahrir Square all week in order to uh, get their demands uh, taken into consideration and fulfilled. Uh, but they are on Tuesday, which is today, they are doing a new uh, protest, big uh, protest called the Will and Escalation Day and it's aimed at settling a timetable for the revolution's goals and the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces uh, has summoned uh, Prime Minister Assam Sharaf for consultations over an expanded reshuffle uh, marches to Tahrir Square uh, in Suez as well uh, there are protests there and the Youth Alliance puts an initiative to decide upon the sit-inners demands this is the headlines from an Ahram newspaper which is basically very close to what other papers are saying your point of view sir on there's, there's a big debate now. Should they stay in Tahrir all week and uh, uh, press for their demands, or it's enough uh, one day per week? Okay. Uh, two days ago, it was five months since uh, the revolution, since the, the, the removal of the president. Uh, almost four months for uh, Hassan Sharaf as prime minister. And actually, uh, there isn't enough uh, very few things were really achieved. Uh, um, the, the security is not yet back. Uh, the economy is not doing fine. Uh, so why should they stay? Uh, what happened is uh, the Fridays were a way to push without harming anybody. It's Friday, it's off. So nothing happened. So they got used to the Fridays. So now it's escalating to, to keep it. And without harming people, it was decided to be in the afternoons only. So it will start after five, so everybody has done his work. And, uh, and let us talk uh, about it with a little bit of common sense. Uh, somebody who is living in pyramids and he's working in Faisal, uh, which is far away Cairo. from... Uh, uh, okay. And he's saying we have enough uh, of this, those protests that happening on Friday in Tahrir Square. So it's a joke, mm. uh, but a revolution is there, it has to achieve its goals. And if somebody, and I don't trust uh, the intentions of uh, maybe everybody saying he's a good guy, but he's, uh, he's weak, maybe, I do not trust his intentions, uh, Mr. Sheriff. And he has a group of, uh, of course, there are good ministers with him, the Minister of Culture is a good guy from the cultural uh, scene. Uh, he is not, it was not his choice, by the way. It was uh, the uh, intellectual's choice. He, he chosen somebody else, they protested, so he accepted what they wanted. Um, Dr. Goudar Khaleh, and I think he's not very happy with him, which astonishes me personally. And it was not his choice, it was the previous minister's choice, uh, Prime Shafiq. Yeah. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a leftist, so, so he doesn't belong to, to the group of Shafiq, but he's a good person. Uh, we have few good people in the, in the cabinet, but the head of the cabinet is not good. He's, he doesn't have a vision, he doesn't have, and his consultants are worse than, than he is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, we have a minister of interior who is from the Ministry of Interior, and this is another problem. We have to change that to get somebody who is from outside the ministry, who, who is strong enough to deal with this, this problem, who is strong enough to understand that the, the, the Ministry of Interior belongs to Egypt. All right, it since we're talking about the Ministry of Interior, uh, the Ahram paper also on, on the front page is saying that police officers uh, are striking, are on strike, and the state of chaos has spread in police stations. Police stations witnessed a state of chaos after the Prime Minister's decision to sack all police officers who were accused of killing protesters during the January 25th of Reg Revolution. Your reaction to that and policemen going on strike? Okay, let's start by what the Prime Minister said. Mm. 
since before Friday, he knew there is a problem. Friday came, it was quite impressive. He didn't talk until Saturday evening. And he said, I'm giving my instructions. First, he shouldn't see my instructions. It's the government's instructions. He is the prime minister, which is in Arabic, Rais Maglis al the chairman of the cabinet. Mm -hmm. He is not the president or the boss of the ministers. Mm -hmm. So the, the cabinet has to decide, not him. And if we are implicating the Ministry of Interior, the Minister of Interior should attend that meeting. And the discussion is either he accepts the outcome of, uh, of what uh, the cabinet decided or he can resign. Um, the funny thing, he said a few minutes after the speech of, uh, of uh, Dr. Sharif, I never heard of it. So could you imagine a prime minister saying something and the minister in, in charge uh, didn't no. hear about it? So, so actually both should go. I, I, I cannot understand it how this can work. Uh, the Minister of Interior, I believe, is being kept and the cabinet is kept until uh, the uh, 15th of August, uh, the 15th of July, when the, the new uh, arrangement of the, uh, the officers of the police officers is done. And I hope uh, the Supreme Council does that because now there are some voices against the Supreme Council, but it's not that high. Mm -hmm. If they do not deliver here, they could get, we have very good people, like Dr. Hazem Bablo, who whose name was, was mentioned uh, next to Assam Sharaf, but they chose the worst one. Mm -hmm. They didn't get the best one. Dr. Hazem Bablo is a very good uh, candidate for that. He is a man who understands economy, which we need now, mm -hmm. and he's a man with a vision, and he's a very calm man who can arrange things for the future. Right. One of the demands of the protesters was the uh, the uh, prosecutions of, of the former uh, members of the regime and uh, the very slow process in, in judgment uh, to, to prosecute uh, those. And that's what's also been mentioned in the Ahram newspaper, that judges now are calling for former regime figures' trials to be transmitted on air, on TV and to allow for satellite channels to follow up what is going on in Tura prison. That's where they are uh, being held. Uh, head of the Garbiya Judges Club, Councillor uh, Abdul Minam Al Sahimi has said that these measures will guarantee an objective approach to the trials. You believe if... Okay, uh, now, uh, the law says it should be a public trial. Public trial means anybody can get in. Uh, in such trials, we cannot really let everybody get in. It's, um, it needs a lot of security and it cannot get a lot of people, a lot of people will be outside. So the best way to, to approach that, and normally it's up to the judge to accept or not, but in these cases the judges should really consider that it, it has to be done because it's, if you see the, 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 the trial itself, you feel uh, justice has been served. So, so it's to their own good. To, to do that, and I see that the majority of the judges are with the, uh, the uh, transmitting uh, of the trials on air. Okay, um, we go, we're still in uh, Aram, but we go now to outside Egypt, we go to Syria where 21,000 detainees in Syrian prisons and Syrian forces kill and injure 21 people in Homs. On Monday, Syrian forces killed a civilian and wounded 20 in heavy machine gun fire on Homs, Syria's third city, and went to house, house, uh, house to house arresting suspected opponents in Hama. Uh, the situation in Syria is getting worse uh, every day, but uh, we're going to know more in this report and we'll be back uh, with our guest. Syrian President Bashar al-Assad has lost legitimacy and is not indispensable. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton made the announcement on Monday as tension soared over an assault by Assad loyalists on the U.S. and French embassies in Damascus. 
In an appearance with European Union Foreign Policy Chief Catherine Ashton in Washington, Clinton also condemned the Syrian attacks and said that Washington did not believe the long-time Syrian ruler would follow through on his promises to reform in the face of escalating protests against his rule. Clinton's comments marked a significant sharpening of U.S. rhetoric on Assad, whose security forces have waged an increasingly brutal crackdown against protesters inspired by pro-democracy movements elsewhere in the Arab world. Several Assad loyalists broke into the U.S. Embassy in Damascus on Monday, and security guards used live ammunition to prevent hundreds from storming the French embassy. They said that the attackers were in protest against a visit by U.S. and French ambassadors to the city of Hama, focus of protest against Assad's rule. France says that the president has lost legitimacy because of the number of killings to try to quell the protest, demanding political freedoms after 41 years of Assad family rule. All right, uh, we are back and we continue our press. Uh, that was Syria report and uh, we go back to what the papers are saying on developments in Egypt. Now, uh, the, the next uh, three uh, items uh, from the Ahram paper are all basically economic but related to the uh, revolution. The US uh, Time magazine uh, says uh, restoring Mubarak's money would be more difficult than ousting Mubarak. Time, uh, the Time has stressed that Egypt's smuggled funds seem amazingly enormous. Uh, it shows the, the reaction to the amount of, of uh, corruption that people uh, outside did not imagine the, the, the current government, the, the former regime was uh, doing. Uh, I personally was shocked when I heard his, uh, his corrupted, financially corrupted. I was against uh, the regime from the point of view the, that this regime that is not capable of running the country. And I never, ever in my life uh, accused the regime of being uh, corrupted financially. I mean, the, the, the head of the regime, President Mubarak, former uh, the former President Mubarak. Uh, uh, but I was personally shocked when I heard stories that I, I could cover. And I see the people who are telling me those stories and giving me the proof they were not really against him. And I'm shocked how you know that and you're not against him. Uh, this means he understand uh, opposition. You're talking about uh, policies. You're talking about uh, capabilities. Uh, somebody who is doing that is very simply a thief. So his place is in jail. He's not a political uh, arrogant. So what he has done and his family was um, like a gang. It can never be in any term a head of state and what really makes me laugh now the people who are saying we're sorry Mr. President um, um, I cannot believe how somebody is talking let us really uh, be nice to that guy okay. anyway uh, the Egyptian stock market registers its worst performance in two months the Egyptian stock market markets uh, indices retreated affected by the concerns of investors of the for the process in Tahrir Square the Ajax 30 dropped 2.9 percent, ending at 5,116.2 points. That's the obvious uh, uh, reaction to developments, political development. It reacts; it has its own toll on the uh, stock market. The minimum salary of employees will begin at around 708 Egyptian pounds a month. That's the minimum salary. A ministry statement said that uh, it used to be 444 Egyptian pounds. It now it's 708. I want to give a comment about the, uh, the, the two subjects here. Yes, go ahead. Uh, one of them, uh, the, the capital market. Uh, uh, when it goes up, they tell you uh, it won and they calculate it in billions. And when it goes down, they calculate it in percentage. So it's 2%. When it goes up, it's 7 billion. When it goes down, it's 2%. It's very funny in, in, uh, in giving the numbers here. Uh, the other thing about the, the salaries. Uh, definitely we have very low income and nobody can live at that level mm -hmm. and if you ask somebody to live at that level you're asking him to do something illegal mm -hmm. that's how it is but increasing the salaries should really be with a government that understands how to push the economy so because just increasing the salary without increase in the in the uh, products to be sold 
that's uh, inflation. Exactly. So it, it's not a matter of, a, uh, it's a matter of standard of living. So yes, definitely people should get more money, but more money that can buy them more goods. Not, not, uh, not that the prices would increase and it's so the they might yeah. buy less goods. Okay. So this is um, a More business of, then. that's why when I was talking about the Prime Minister, somebody who can understand that. Okay, we, we move on quickly. Uh, the Muslim group warns uh, Tahrir Sitin would lead to chaos or a military coup. Spokesman of the group, Tarak Zumur, warned of continuing the sit-ins and said that such things would lead to street chaos. So the Muslim, brother, the, the Muslim groups are uh, against the sit-ins taking place at uh, Tahrir Square. Uh, uh, do, you, do you want to some, yeah, some sure. very quickly because we remove uh, okay uh, uh, Tahrir Square since May 27 became uh, civil as it was in the, in the they the Muslim groups which is a very minimal group in numbers in Egypt but unfortunately in uh, on in the media they are taking much bigger uh, share of the nation. Yes, and they are giving a bigger impression than the, the, real, the real powers. Yeah, yes. and uh, that's why uh, I see these guys are are uh, very angry with uh, with that. Are trying to to uh, Th they want it to stay as it is because it's for their own interest. Situation right for now. their own interest, mm -hmm. unless if we go back to dictatorship, mm -hmm. it is their end. Mm -hmm. Democracy will finish all that. Very good. Uh, very quickly, I will just run through the, the final couple of uh, items. Former Deputy uh, Prime Minister and Minister of Agriculture Yusuf Wali was accused of um, looting uh, 5 million Egyptian pounds for developing Giza Zoo. Uh, the Illicit Gains Authority questions former businessman, NDP, prominent figure Ahmed Rez, uh, and will be questioned on the sources of his wealth. And also uh, concerning the money from abroad, the Egyptian Union in Britain takes measures to restore smuggled funds. Uh, there are measures taken against uh, former ministers Yusuf Boutros Ghali and Rashid Mohammed Rashid who are in Britain or are presumed to be in Britain. And this was announced by the head of the popular initiative to restore Egypt's smuggled funds, Muhtaz Salah Eddin. And uh, he says that uh, there are files, uh, there are uh, legal files to be given to the UK like what happened to uh, Hassan Salim in uh, Spain. Do you have anything about the three issues? They're all one. Maybe. One of them is about uh, Dr. Yusuf Wali. Yes. I consider Dr. Yusuf Wali, unfortunately, people who doesn't have anything to do with agriculture are the people who attacked both best ministers since 1952. Mm. Uh, the two best ministers of agriculture are uh, Engineer Said Marai and Dr. Yusuf Wali. Dr. Yusuf Wali increased the uh, the uh, production of wheat uh, to 200 uh, percent per acre uh, the same happened to rice would then would a decrease a substantial decrease in the use of water mm -hmm. because the timing became much less uh, it's um, it's um, it's a very stupid allegation about him about his uh, integrity when they talked about the 150 tons of uh, the pesticides um, and this is uh, another thing that is a very joke. It's a very funny joke that he stole five million. I'm sure he's, uh, he will be acquitted of. Uh, he was known to be a minister who did not take any money uh, during his time. He's known to be. Uh, he had one, one dif something I can I can say bad thing about. Him. He used to have very bad uh, associates top, yes. tops in in his uh, in his ministry. Okay. But about him, he was a very good minister. He increased, uh, as I told you, uh, the uh, the uh, production, and uh, no one after him did anything. They destroyed what he did. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we have to end our press review for now. I'd like to thank Mr. Mohsen Badawi, journalist and chairman of the Abdurrahman Badawi Culture Center. Thank you very much. Sir, for thank you. We go now to a little bit of tourism with Ashley Gindi from Sharm el-Sheikh to tell us what is happening there and what to do if you go to Sharm el-Sheikh.